Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by on my channel. I'm Bretsky and today we are going to start rebuilding this 5 horsepower Briggs. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you saw the introduction uh, video before this. Uh, let's just say I've got a 5 horsepower Briggs here. Uh, it was the second engine I ever acquired about four years ago when I first started. It was all seized up, uh, got it unseized, stripped it down, uh, cleaned the body and put everything else in boxes. It got mixed up with a little of other boxes. So now I'm just going through getting the best bits I can find to rebuild this guy. Um, it was a, if I remember right, a 1994. No idea what it came off. Um, but they're used for things like cement mixers and generators and all kinds of things um eventually i am going to performance this thing up uh i'm going to do some modifications like shaving the eyebrows and one thing or another but for now i just want to get it rebuilt you know it's been sitting in the cupboard for four years it deserves to run so today we're going to start with the valves uh we're going to lap them we're going to check the gaps we're going to put the uh Bowel springs in but before we do that uh, I just want to hone the cylinder and just make sure that the the head and uh, the top of the, the block is, is all smooth and so let's get some sandpaper and get set up okay so to do this I've just got a bit of um, 120 grit don't want to go any more coarse than that this is probably still a bit too coarse um because you don't want to you know you don't want to put grooves in in your head um and everything you just want to smooth that out make sure it's all level um i'll explain that so what we're going to do is we're just going to tape this down he says so it doesn't move I don't think actually this is going to work very well um, because of all the crap on my, my bench this isn't sticking but that might be enough we'll hold it a bit um, but you get the general idea so we're just going to lay the head on like that and we're just going to and you get generally get to see the high spots and the low spots you want it all to be even so as you can see we've got some bits that need doing there That's not too bad, just needs a bit more work. So I'll continue this and uh, we'll come back and we'll do the same with the block. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. There's still some pitted bits in here, but I don't want to go too mad. Um, but that, that's good enough for what we want. So now, do the same with the block. It's not as easy. Because you've got to <laughs> try and get hold of it, but there's a few high and low spots, but it's not too bad. Like here, you can see, but yeah. So, I'll finish that off and we'll come back. Okay, that's both them finished now. Um, they're in pretty, where are you? Pretty good condition now. Well, as best as you can get them. There's still some pitting and some scoring on there, but, you know, it's an old engine. What do you want? Uh, so now we'll hone out the, uh, 
the cylinder after I've had a slurp my coffee with my favourite mug periodic table of the elements to make me look intelligent okay so if you haven't got one of these I suggest you get one if you're going to be building an engine uh, a hooner basically spring loaded with some stones on and you just whack it into your drill like so and then you get your trusty 3-in-1 oil well you do when you're in the UK when you're in the UK and you tinker you have 3-in-1 oil a WD-40 in every shed um, I actually got two lots here I'll explain what this old one is for later so we're basically I'm just gonna because we've been sanding and stuff just give it a wipe so we're not grounding bits of aluminium into the chamber there okay and I get a bit of oil when I cut the top off hang on and we're just gonna put some around the chamber a bit of a wipe all around put the stones in now when you're honing out a chamber I, I made the mistake when I first did it just going down slowly and getting it as smooth as I could which is what you'd expect really but it's actually wrong you actually want a kind of cross hair pattern um, the reason being when the piston comes up with oil with the cross hair pattern it tends to keep more of the oil around the, the chamber to help the piston that's what that's what I believe um, so you just go up and down give it a wipe give it a bit of WD bring you over and show you okay hopefully the light can show you there's no scoring as smooth but you've got that kind of crosshair see what I mean so that is good to go okay on to the valves uh, intake and exhaust obviously um, here we have the keepers that keeps the spring on sometimes the valve has a little hole in um, and you have a little bar that keeps it um, this one's not too bad I think oh, I must have wire wheeled this one at some point this one needs a bit more work but what I also do is I get some scotch bright or just some scouring pad you know for the kitchen and I put these in the drill. Scotch brights the best because you've got different coarseness. On you know, you get a really coarse one, then a finer one. So what we do is put the valve in your drill. Get a coarse piece. Wrap it round. Spin it up. And already, you can see, look how lovely that's come up. It's like new.
Look at that. And then you go on to the finer one. Just to give it a sort of final polish if you like. And there we have a lovely valve. Now obviously this bit round here needs sorting out, that, that'll happen when we lap it. You see the difference. And that one's been wire wheels, look. A little neat trick. This one's still got some scoring and a bit of damage, but again, these are all old bits. So I'll do the same with this and then we'll carry on. Beautiful. Okay, guys, so now we're gonna lap the valves. Um, for that, you really need a lapping tool. Uh, I've just had these delivered. I did have one that was a wooden thing. Um, I used it once and I threw it away. The suckers were terrible. They wouldn't stick to the valve enough and they were really annoying. That's a common thing. Um, but I just had these arrive, uh, different sizes. Uh, I think they were seven pounds on eBay and they're actually quite good. But if you don't have any suckers, uh, the only other option you could use, which I have been using sometimes, is a magnet this is one of those extendable ones you know to get when you drop a bolt in the exhaust port or something um i've kind of glued it and so it didn't move um and it works well you know so you can lap the valves the only problem is sometimes like on this particular briggs this uh intake valve is fine but the exhaust valve is stainless, so it won't work. Um, so you really need one of these annoying things. <laughs> uh, so, let's lap the valves. Okay, now off camera I already did the, uh, the intake valve. Um, as you can see, there's a nice seat here. Um, because I was trying out my new tools. Anyway we'll do the exhaust valve which is always the worst anyway because of the carbon that it has to put up with um so we've got some coarse and some fine lapping paste it's just a, a a gritty paste is all it is um so we'll get a little piece oh, wrong valve um, and just put it on, spread it round. You don't need a ton of this stuff. I've got too much on here, to be honest with you. So I'll put some of that back. These are very inexpensive online, and they last a long time because you don't use a lot. Um, I'll give it a little bit of help on the stem with a little bit of oil. In it goes, and then get your where well, you need to wet it a little bit. Put it on the valve, do it so you guys can see, it. and then you just spin it and you kind of tap it and turn it just so it goes sort of even. They're never perfect, but <laughs> I do get annoyed with these things. Come on. It's one of those jobs you have to do, really. Look, bloody things. See, I get annoyed with these. Anyway. Uh, then we'll wipe that off. And 
and it is starting to form a seat so I'll keep doing that and then I'll use the fine paste to finish it off okay so we're just finishing up the fine paste so let's have a little look here let's wipe that off as you can see nice little seat developed there that should be sufficient okay guys so I think we're done with this video it's getting a bit long now um, so we've got the, all the everything done the valves are lapped now before I attach the valve springs etc we need to put the cam and the camshaft in really um, and start checking the gaps and one thing and another so uh, we'll do that in the next video so thanks for hanging out with me in the man cave and uh, see you again soon